Here we go. New is law. Peggy, this is going to be a good one. It is going to be a great one, but. Um, yeah, and this has nothing to do with on the field, in the court. But equal rights in the locker room. Yes, sir. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's going to get contentious. It's going to get uncomfortable, but it's going to be real. Because as we were just sitting back and asking ourselves, like, yo, there's a lot of things that we have to be real with. Uh, I had a conversation with a young lady uh, over dinner, um, work dinner. Yeah. Oh, it was a group of us. Yeah, it was a group, right? And I, I remember having this conversation a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, it's like, yo, we always hear about people asking for equal rights, especially in sports. Because this whole shift in we need to support women's sports. The WNBA has obviously seen a peak in attention. For sure. <clears throat> but... I only know media to be covered one way, and that's when I was in the locker room mm -hmm. or when I was playing. And it was very intrusive. Mm -hmm. It was sometimes extremely uncomfortable. It was so much where I understand that you have a job to do, but I still need to get dressed. All right? And I asked myself this. I gave you the scenario as we were, we were doing a pre-production call. And I said, Peggy, I'm going to give you a scenario, and I want you to answer it to the best of your ability. Two different athletes, both success in the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. One athlete is Travis Kelsey. He makes the game-winning catch for the touchdown, right? Chiefs win. Caitlin Clark sinks a game-winning three-point for her team. Mm -hmm. But before you get that analogy, we have to set up the scene of what okay. is being changed, all right? So, <clears throat> as you know, the NFLPA, over the past three years, the NFLPA has tried to work with the NFL and Pro Football Writers of America to move media interviews out of the locker room. However, there has been little willingness to collaborate on new solutions. Players feel that the locker room interviews invade their personal privacy and is, is uncomfortable. This isn't about limiting media access, but about respecting players' privacy and dignity. So this is something that is going to be a media change um, to the out dated policy of the NFL and so obviously Cam you spoke about that you know the invasion of your privacy right but you also had uh, a example Caitlin no Clark. but but I want you to read the uh, the writers association statement um, so the PFWA appreciate the NFL appreciate uh, appreciates the NFL PA membership following the NFL media policy that has been in place for decades. NFL players asking to speak outside the locker room has always been part of the league's media access policy. We are in continuing discussion with the NFLPA executives regarding the media access policy. The goal is to make everyone comfortable in the locker room setting and to have players and clubs follow the NFL media policy. So that is the PFWA, the Writers Association. That's the statement Pro that they made. Pro Football Writers. Pro Football Writers Association. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is a very serious topic, so I, I don't want to make, you know, no jokes of a serious matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but to my scenario, scenario, right, uh, two different athletes, mm -hmm. same winning situation. And it can also go both ways if it's a losing effort. All right, Travis Kelsey makes the game-winning catch. And how much media attention will it garner for people to want to ask him questions after the game? Sure. And I'm talking about not on the field. I'm talking about once he goes into the locker room and does his whatever, whether he meets at his locker or he meets at a podium, mm -hmm. how much attention that will garner. Yeah. Versus Caitlin Clark. Draining a three-point game-winning shot and how much that will garner. I think the media frenzy behind everything will match. The difference is the integrity of waiting for that person to be ready to talk. Yeah, that's big. That's going to be different. Oftentimes, 
we see athletes, whether in weekly calls or weekly uh, um, media requests, where they always have their shirt off. Mm -hmm. How many times have we ever seen a woman do an interview with just a bra? Not, not at all. Right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not saying that to... In comparison, or like, oh, no, 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 of course. I'm saying it is inappropriate for a woman to do that. But I am also saying most times in the in the male locker room, a lot of men don't have time to cover up. Yeah. So there's a documentary, uh, I don't I believe it's a 30 for 30, uh, of just access where it was titled Let Them Wear Towels. And it's of a if it, it's a documentary about a female journalist that wanted access to talking to athletes, the mm -hmm. same as male journalists having access. Correct. It's evident that a lot of those rules, stipulations, and policies are outdated. Correct. For those people who do not know how to cope or understand what I'm talking about, just sit the fuck back. And just understand from a player, you're talking to a person who has the emotions of excitement after a game and also the, the, the downpouring of emotions when things don't go your way, right. a la Cam Newton at the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can get media trained all you want, but it still fails into comparison what it's really like in that actual situation. We're so aware we're so sensitive to women not feeling the harassment because of movements like me too because of most recently the things of sean diddy combs uh, no matter harvey weinstein uh whoever sexual assault it doesn't matter i'm not an opponent of sexual assault what i am saying is if we're going to give women those rights to allow them to get prepared to take on the media, we should do the same thing for male athletes. There's been too many times in my career yeah. where I had to, excuse me, excuse me, can I, can I, and it's almost like you covering up to put your underwear on. Yeah. And granted, I, I even asked, I, I, is there male reporters? Wow. And I use her name because she's the most, polarizing female athlete in America, probably right now, mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark. Okay. While Caitlin Clark is coming out of the shower, right? She and I, and I, and, and I, and I don't want to disrespect her or her family or her situation. I'm just using her as an example. Correct. She doesn't have to worry about, yo, like, is somebody going to take a picture of me or is somebody going to be looking at me in a, in a weird manner? But some would say, of course not, duh. But it's like, if we're asking for equality, yeah. there's times when I come out of the shower and I'm locking eyes with a woman like, yo, I'm like, yo. <laughs> some attractive, some not. Yeah. It, it don't, don't matter. matter. It don't but matter. it's like, damn, Caitlyn or Angel Reese would never have to worry about an a, a opposite sex looking at them in a manner yeah. where it's like, and dare you try to call like, yo, bro, she looking at me? Yeah. Or, yeah. or it's like, Dressing inappropriately. How many athletes can really say like, yo, bro, you wearing that in here? It's just the thing that goes through everybody's mind. Nobody says it. And no, am I saying a woman should worry about what she's wearing going into a male locker room? But I would then second that and say, does a man have to worry about what he says what he does as in actions and what he wears when he goes into a female locker room? Hell yeah. No, you got to. Hell yeah. a, a man is not going to do an interview in no tank top going into an uh, interview to, to talk to Skylar Diggins. <sighs> See what I'm saying? It, no, no, it's not, prof it's not, it's not uh, professional for a person to ask that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You don't get to tell me what I get to wear or not, right? Mm -hmm. There's some things that's inappropriate. There's some things that is appropriate. A woman looking in a seductive manner, and we know that there's a lot 
that crossed the line. They blew the lines a little bit where it's like, yo, bro, that skirt is a little uh, flagrant. You know, that shirt is a little off. Uh, but I, w- I would even say, like, since 1985, um, that's when women gained equal rights to start going into the locker room. Mm-hmm. And just even from that, though, Cam, like, you already said, like, it's an invasion of your privacy. Like, I even seen men, women, but even being in a locker room, and it's like players, if you're just one player, lockers are, are side by side, super tight. And so if the player does great and they're not a Cam Newton, they're not the star of the team, a lot of times, media or, or, or a player has to, in a towel, or almost naked, is walking through the media scrum to get to their locker, their, per, their respective locker. It has to change and, you know, put their drawers on in front of, like, you standing beside strangers pretty much with cameras in their hand. Correct. And you have to do this to put your drawers on. And so it's like I've also been in the locker rooms where even coming straight after the games. And it's like you all get, what, 10 to 15 minutes to get showered. There's a whole team of people that got a shower. You got to put your clothes on. And I have seen walk beside female uh, employees or, like, you know, people I work with. And they literally have their – some people have their eyes down looking at the floor until they get where they're going or trying to, like, actually, like, not even look at guys. And then I also see other people, men and women, looking around, like kids in a candy store. And it's just like, bro, like – I felt for players because it's like, man, you literally, your most personal business is not personal anymore, you know, and that has to be a lot going on. And then we also have, you know, times where stuff has gotten out. Like, um, what's my man? God, uh, what's, his name? what's this dude? Andrew Luck. Andrew so Luck. It's, it's also been a situation where, like, stuff has gotten out like an Andrew Luck. Um, he got caught. And in the NFL, we have quality control people that actually look and looks at this stuff all day, every day. Is like when they're going through interviews, like, is that a butt? Is that nuts? Is that this and that? And it's like, the fact so, that you got to do that is just too So much. there is a person whose job is to make sure that nobody that, misses that really, correct. an inappropriate visual, like somebody's ass cheeks. Correct. In a, in a local news kind of thing. Yeah. Somebody's... You know what I'm saying? Body silhouette. Yes. It's not getting dropped out. In the back of, you know what I'm saying, somebody. Because granted, ladies and gentlemen, those who are not aware of this situation, it is still the locker room. Yes. This is still where you have to shower. This is still where you have, this is your personal space. It's almost like your bedroom Mm -hmm. in in comparison to your workstation. Right? You don't sleep there, but there is a lot of things that are, very personal to you in this area. This is where you compartmentalize. This is where you debrief. This is where you decompress. This is where you just have your work area that it's yours and yours only. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm looking at something here, Peggy, that, that I see the NFL and the breakdown for media. I'm seeing the NBA. I'm seeing MLB. I'm seeing NHL. But none of them have the policy that the WNBA has. It says, current media policy restricts locker room access for reporters. Mm -hmm. A significant shift that started in 2003. Instead of, huh? It started in 2023. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Current media policy restricts locker room access from reporters. A significant shift that started in 2023. Instead of locker room interviews, Players are now made available for media requests in designated areas like interview rooms or hallways outside the locker room, both before and after the game. This ain't equal. This is not. Would you like that option? For sure. If we if we talking about equal, it just is not lopsided to be like, yo, I want I want the participation of. Like, no, these are things that we're talking about equality. Yeah. Bro, I don't give a damn how bad this person play or I don't give a damn how good this person play. You're going to have to wait until this person is ready yeah. to talk to you in this designated area. So let me ask you this, and this is just from the media side, from my perspective. Sometimes the best stories are released in the locker room. It's a raw emotion. You, you, people are able to catch that. Understood. Like, what you, what, what's your thoughts in regards to it's that? It's going to have to wait. Yeah. If you don't catch that, that person – 
on the court, on the field, on the ice, going out, you have to wait a substantial amount of time. And we're talking about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, it used to be after the conclusion of the game, you would have anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, and then you would get a warning call from media coming in, media yeah, coming at, in, at and the then same boom. same time, boom. Like, what the fuck? But it's because the, the story is not worth the embarrassment. That's what you're saying. Correct. The yeah. story is not. I mean, just imagine, like, our heroes as athletes, they get a, a picture leaked from a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Weirdo being a male or female that, that just slides a picture of... <laughs> There you go, your boy. Girl, I seen him in the locker room. He only really got abs like that. Yeah. I seen a donkey ass dude to just say like, oh, yo, I just seen, but she got some, like that's some weird ass energy. It's yeah. some creeps out there. I don't it give is. a damn what your profession is. So we can't protect Caitlin Clark and just send Travis Kelsey and likes of him to the wolves. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not saying invade women's privacy. No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is they figured it out for the WNBA, and it's yes. time for them to figure it out for the MLB, for the NFL, for NHL, or any men's sports. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is invasive. It is intrusive. It is one of those things like, damn, baby. Damn. Like, look at look at some of these clips right here, yeah. Peggy, that you got pulled up. So we got David Njoku. This is, uh, he, he doing an interview. And just pretty much his pants, and that's it. I just want to be out there for my team. You know? I, I want to be out there to, uh, giving them the energy that, that they require and then vice versa. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm out there. So that that right there is a lot. Because even in the... He's in the designated area. area. But, that, he, that, but still, though, Cam, a lot of people don't understand this. This is in a locker room. So obviously they did a backdrop. This is in a locker room. So this is kind of a choice for him to walk over there and do this. He could have added a shirt or whatever. But that says nothing to all of these other people that's getting dressed behind him, behind the scenes. They're not showing that part. Yeah. And that's the scary part about but, it. But, okay, so just to put it into perspective, it's like just because David and Joku is doing his interview, it's still people that's walking around potentially naked, naked yeah. that every – it's like, yo, I've seen times where people are just like this. So, Cam, um, how do you feel about tonight's performance? Yeah, they're not even looking. Yeah, so now the camera could be facing or they record. It's supposed to be a voice recorder, but you see what I'm saying? Say, yes. It's like for those people who have not witnessed what I'm talking about, you would never understand. You would never understand. No, but you coming out the shower, like bro, like then you look at a sea of people, and then sometimes they be bringing plus ones in that motherfucker. Oh, this is my cameraman. This motherfucker, especially if you winning. Like, come on, bro. It be real. Like, well, what's happening? And you got to speak on it. What's another example? So like, we, obviously, the Andrew Luck. I mean, Jamar Chase, this was him putting on his hoodie. Um, so he didn't show any clothes. But he's still finishing getting dressed in the middle of an interview. And it's just like, come Granted, on. I get it. I have seen that, though. I have seen players... <laughs> Reporters come up, man, hold on, let me put my clothes on real quick. Yeah. God damn. Like, Bro, you know it, I understand in media, it's extremely time sensitive. It's very, that, that is true. And even. The first one the, out. The, bro, it is the first to post. Yes. But hold on, we have to sanction, we have to unionize the expectation of this. Because, like I said, how y'all treat women it's completely different than how y'all treat men. But why do you feel like that, though? Um, like, because women, it's like never happened. Women actually was fighting for rights to get, and it's not a man or women thing, but just fighting for equality to get in the It's locker. extremely subjective, and I'm not going to really go into specifics of it, yeah. but it is a little sensitive for women to say, I've been sexually harassed. Yeah. But sexual harassment comes in many different forms, shapes, and sizes. And I think as men, we don't even... We don't know, even identify it as sexual harassment it because happened. it's just she like, just, ugh. She just gave me, a, she gave me a compliment. That's what I was about to say was I feel like a lot of, let's say, let's say the opposing people in this argument yeah. are probably sitting like, why, why do guys even care? Because yeah, yeah. y'all typically don't care to have your shirts off or whatever in other situations. So it, it's like... 
this is just one of those situations where it's like, regardless, it should always be the same. It's a Correct. human right yeah, that we should be able to protect our bodies in any situation. In any capacity, because that's there's stupid. creeps that's out there. Oh, you don't. Men and women. It's, what, as a man, it's like, I don't want another man looking at me. I might not buy a woman, but I'm like, also depending on depending on how I'm feeling. And and that's the thing too, is like some people are like, every guy don't feel comfortable bro. about their body or whatever, want to be walking around. There's <laughs> For all athletes that's out there, there's different terms and words that you identify people as that. We used to call them D-dubs. What's that? We got a D-dub in here. Like, what? Oh, that was alarm. Like, wee, 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 wee. We got a dick watcher. There you go. It's like, bro, hey, nigga, what, what are you doing? Hey, hey, bro, what are you doing? You straight? Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, bro, you just catch these dudes. Like, bro, what are you? Yo, who the fuck, who, whose man is this? Wow. So it's like, yo, it's it, these D-dubs don't just, aren't just, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I don't judge that, but I'm just talking about for a great workplace environment. It can become kind of like a, a blind eye when the male is reporting like, yo, bro, like, hey, come on now. Like, pushing up on me too, or, they, or whoever. It don't I'm always got to be a she. Yes. It could be a he. he. It could be like, yo, the situation, like I've never seen – Cheryl Swoops had these issues. Maybe I'm ignorant to this. And I'm doing my service to help impact because it is from a person who has been in this situation where it's like, damn, dog, like, can I get a little space here? Mm -hmm. It is overwhelming. And, and people do want to do their job. And I get it. But that's going to have to wait because it, it's not the same way when you're covering female sports. And you have a couple of um, – go to the, the clips of uh, And a the couple players. of NFL players chimed in. So, Tory Smith said, if you only <laughs> if y'all only knew how awkward some of the male report male reporters act, straight meat watchers, like you said, D-dubs. D-dubs. And um, Cal – how do you say his last name? Uh, uh, check. check. So, mm -hmm. Cal check said, maybe you can keep Grant Cohn from always hanging around our lockers while we're changing. So – I'm telling you, bro, it's more common than you yeah, think. Yeah. Like, it's it's a lot of creeps. That's, that's got to feel bad. You come home, you like, bro, I don't know if this person got a picture of me or not. I caught somebody. That's that got to be. It's like an unspoken that, word, yeah. especially for male athletes. Was the, it like that in college for you? No. Like, so they protect you, their players in college. Like, you, you get to go to the podium or they have a, a, a designated time. I don't remember seeing a lot of female reporters. Or just reporters. Do they come in the college locker room? I, I, this, granted, hey, you. we're talking about 15 years yeah. ago. Like, I don't really know or can re really remember. But okay. I just don't remember a lot of reporters covering that in depth. Like, in right the off the... Yeah. Because like, social media wasn't even, and a lot of this has changed due yeah. to social media. But like, a, a, a lot of it, like, like right that. after practice, having a, a sea of people trying to, like, talk to you, I don't remember that in college. Yeah. Like, and then even if we, we talked to the media, it was always in a podium situation. It was never, you know, not in a podium situation. Yeah. And granted, you got to, I'm the quarterback here. So I don't, I, I, even when I was in the league, and I, and I, and I shared this story with you too where uh, during the Super Bowl, like my mom, yeah, you know, after all the dust had settled, and she said, son, I knew something was wrong with you because I seen you had your football stuff on. You never do your interviews with your football. jersey still on. And little did they know, I was not ready to talk to the media. I was being pressured, like, yo, you got to go talk. Yo, you got to, in, 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 in Drummond's voice, it's like, you got to go talk. They, yeah. they, they, we're going to get fined. Man, I'm like, bro. So I wasn't already in that yeah, in the mood anyway. in the mood in, in the mood to talk and you get pressure because your your contract mandates you to make yourself available to the media. It's a contractual agreement. So when you talk about making 60 million dollars, 50 million dollars, 20 million dollars, 15 it don't matter. You got to make yourself available to the media. And you used to one thing I did and now understand more but after games used to sit with your thoughts a lot and take your time before you went out. Yeah. And that always helped. It helped a lot when you did speak to media finally because it's like, all right, now I know I, the game. I kind of thought about what happened, yeah. what might be said. You also can hear other questions from other, other players, players so you can see what type of tone 
that certain people may have. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be the first lab rat to kind of go out there and just be yeah. answering a question or be be caught off guard with the question. And we used to feel for you, too, because depending on a good game or a bad game, reporters will be talking to somebody by you while you getting dressed, but they're watching you and how your reaction is. So then when it's time for you to do your interview, yeah. Cam, so I seen you was soaking in the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. like, bro, I was soaking, yeah. putting my drawers on. So you watch me put my drawers on, trying Everything. to figure out how I'm feeling. Everything. Ain't nothing off camera. Right. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing ain't off, record. off record. It's on record. Yeah, yeah. So, on record, that's but it. off record. Off yeah. record, but on record. So what, what would be the... Uh, I would just say, what would be like the steps to getting this kind of handled? Would it just be lawsuits and ways to... No, like, because this is a he say, she say yeah. type of situation. It's hard for a person to admit that, yo, bro, like you a D-dub. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is what will help is having designated areas and allowing players to have the proper time to go to those designated yeah. areas, right? And that's it. Now, if you want to go to that designated area in Joku, shirtless, cool. That's your that's choice. That's your choice. But meeting that motherfucker right outside a shower or treatment or something else like that, it's like, damn, like, let me, yeah. oof, let me get myself together. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Oh, we want the same rights that women have, rightfully so. It's not like they're like, no, just make it equal. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that has to shift for women's rights, and there's also other things, too, that we, we have overlook, to. Overlook. Just so we, we, correct. That's all I'm saying. And yeah. I apologize to anybody if I offended anybody, but I just wanted to bring light to this specific Situation. So you in agreement? You're happy this is happening in the NFL? Of course, I'm. I'm happy that this is being light shed on this situation because it's been around for years. Mm -hmm. It's just okay now, finally. Yeah.